What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and this article I found floating around on Twitter and I gotta say, it's I'm smiling a little bit because it's a joke. This article is an absolute joke. Uh, you can see from the headline, Hollywood still won't let female superheroes exist in the present. And of course, it's it's not talking about female superheroes because we know that tons of female superheroes exist in the present. We just saw this huge feminine team up for Avengers Endgame, right? Where they all get do it together and do the girl power thing at the very end, which that was set in current day, in present day. We just watched Birds of Prey. Uh, well, some people did. Not many, I suppose. You can look at the box and say not many people watched it. Uh, we just saw Birds of Prey, an all female superhero mo well they're not really superheroes but you know what i mean all female comic book hero movie and we all know how that went so danny prince is the author of this article and i just want to give some background on her because i do think it's important uh you go these are the only things she's written for cbr not much just a couple things but including this batwoman's crisis twist could save season two um yeah sure of course it's already renewed so yeah that's true but let's just look over here. When I'm seeing this and reading it, I saw a lot of theys. I expected to see a her or maybe the name Danny was a guy, but just spelled differently. But no, their academic interests, their undergraduate thesis looked at the hashtag Me Too movement. And I was like, wow, that's strange. A lot of theys and theirs and thems. So I went ahead and looked at her WordPress site. Here, did you can go check it out. It's pastelgeek.wordpress.com slash Danny. If you guys want to go check her out, if you like her writing. Um, hello there, I see you found my page. I am a queer, Matisse, 25-year-old individual, they, them, based in Canada, writing about geek culture, femininity, and what it means to be an ultra-feminine, bubblegum, pink femby that's immersed in geek culture and living in a world where the two are often dichotomized. But it seems like just right there, you have dichotomized it yourself, as if being ultra-feminine and being a geek should be something that is different. You're the one that put those in the same sentence and acted like it's strange. Um, it's, it's not. It's normal. You know, people, people, anybody can be a geek or a nerd or whatever you want. Uh, you don't have to try to draw differences between yourself and anyone else. But anyway, that gives you a good frame of reference when looking at this article. I can't read all of it because honestly, it's tough to read. It's written a little strangely and it's really long and full of absolute garbage. But uh, we'll read a little bit about it and why she thinks this is the case. The politics of producing, advertising, and creating films centered on female superheroes is not a new topic. Every time a solo-led female superhero film gets released, fans are quick to pass judgment on the film, speculating that it can be anywhere from the best thing since sliced bread or the worst thing to happen in a superhero franchise. And I'm going to stop you right there because we have all seen the reaction to the Batman footage, to the Batman suit reveal, Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson's The Batman. People have had the exact same response that you're talking about here. Pass judgment on the film, speculating it could be anywhere from the best thing to the worst thing to happen for the superhero franchise. That is how fans argue about things and fans discuss things when they come out. That is normal. That happens with every film that comes out that people care about. That's some sort of origin story. You look at them and you say, wow, does this person look like I think the Batman should look? Because we all have been reading these stories and these stories mean so much to us that we are like, wow, this is the Batman that I want to see. This is the definitive Batman to me. This is the definitive Spider-Man. It has to have this. So we argue about it. It's one of the things that makes geek and nerd fandom so interesting because we're so dedicated and so invested in the, the small things like that. It has nothing to do with female superheroes. Just saying. So clear that up for you right there. Even before the release of Marvel's Captain Marvel, fans were rating Rotten Tomatoes and intentionally giving it low ratings, leaving it a whopping 45% audience score compared to the critics' score of 78%. Even DC's Wonder Woman faced pre-release criticism. James Cameron argued the film wasn't as groundbreaking as critics claimed since Gal Gadot was, quote, Miss Israel and since she was wearing a kind of bustier costume that was very form-fitting. So my question to you is, does that mean that since the overwhelming response to Wonder Woman was positive from both critics and fans. Are you saying that even though it was overwhelmingly positive, it still had one person criticize it? Look, James Cameron, he criticized it. Does, is that somehow not allowing female superheroes to exist? I'm kind of puzzled by what you're talking about. Every film receives criticism. If you're trying to find a world in which 
a superhero film or a female-led superhero film will not face criticism of any kind, you're literally insane. Because it's just not going to happen. There's always going to be people that don't like something. Always. It's no secret that pop culture and superhero fan communities have become overwhelmingly toxic. But when a new female superhero emerges in a pop culture scene, suddenly it's all hands on deck for fans to criticize or even bully content creators. Um, now, oh, so quickly in this article, you've gone to now we're going to uh, play victim. Poor content creators. They're bullied because they created these female superheroes. These female superheroes are bullied. Okay, we understand where this is going. We have seen things like this before. Now, of course, uh, since I said you already have these female-led superhero movies that are set in the present, you immediately have to go and talk about that. Uh, female-led superhero movies are far and few between, with only female-led films in the current DC and MCU being Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, and now Birds of Prey. While the MCU doesn't have a shortage of female characters, it does have a not-so-great track record of how it deals with women. In Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, the MCU killed off, most notably, both Gamora and Black Widow. Most notably? Most notably. You think that those are the most notable deaths in Avengers Endgame? First of all, Gamora is fine. Gamora is fine. Uh, they were able to find the other Gamora. Gamora is still going to be a part of the MCU. That's not a real death. Black Widow is a real death. And it was awful. Like, it was it was legit uh, incredible the way they did that scene. Tony Stark is the most notable death in this movie. You're either only looking at it through the lens that you want to look at it, or you're intentionally leaving out him because he ruins your narrative. He is the most notable death. that create, And then they go on to say, for the recurring trope of man pain. That's... The, I can tell you the Iron Man death caused a lot more man pain than Black Widow or Gamora getting thrown off the edge of uh, Vormir uh, to get the soul stone. Way more damage. Not even close. Most spectacular, however, is all these female-led superheroes have two things in common. The narrative revolves around women, and the narratives of each film exists in the past, with the exception of Birds of Prey. That's right, because we know that Birds of Prey does exist in the present. So you have to leave that exception. You have to. And the idea that we can't have origin stories for women, is that what you're trying to tell us? We can't have these origin stories? I'll agree that Black Widow should have been done a long time ago, and that's the MCU's fault. But an origin story for Wonder Woman, after she made an appearance in BBS, how does that not make sense? We saw an origin story for Captain America in much the same way, set in World War II instead of in World War I. This is not some crazy outlandish thing. And it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be criticized, I suppose, that they're not allowed to live in the present. She goes on in this article to complain about the fact that it's in the past makes it easier for people to appear misogynist to them than it would be to have them in present day. Then you'd actually have to address real life misogyny that happens on a day to day basis. The micro and macro aggressions that women have to face. Of course, that's what we want to watch a movie about. Never mind that the majority of the audience that shows up to female-led superhero movies are men. Never mind that more, more men went to go see Wonder Woman than women. And then when you have opposite with Aquaman, more women showed up to see that movie than men. So maybe you should think about the audience that's going to see your movie before you start deciding to lecture people about how to treat women i guess it, that's what you want to make your movie about we saw how that worked with birds of prey when they went out and promoted it as some misogynist movie that de women dealing with everyday misogyny everyday microaggressions wow that's really what you want them to market it as birds of prey we saw how that worked so i i can't i i cannot read this whole article because it would take me too freaking long um she makes a couple good points about Black Widow, about the Black Widow movie she probably should have been made earlier for sure. Um, in every single film that Black Widow has been featured in with the MCU, her abilities are murky. Her past is only ever alluded to. Audiences were unable to form an emotional connection to Black Widow, so when she finally dies in Endgame, her sacrifice rings hollow, barely acknowledged by the people she considered family, and is even eclipsed by Iron Man's death. One might think... The Black Widow movie would hit theaters May 2020 is a little too late for the character, especially now Natasha's Black Widow can't return to the silver screen in the present day MCU again. If, or even if more Black Widow movies follow this one, she'll be forever relegated to the past. Um, I, I agree. I agree with that. It should have happened earlier and you don't have that same emotional resonance with her sacrifice and they just kind of ignored it. 
I'll agree with you there, Danny. Um, that's a, a decent point and one that any anyone should make, for sure. DC, on the other hand, offers viewers women-led films in the way of Birds of Prey and Wonder Woman. While Wonder Woman is frustrating with its decision to remain in the 20th century instead of the 21st, so as not to explore her character in a more contemporary cultural context, uh, having Wonder Woman fight in the 80s still affirms the notion that Diana Prince, both as Wonder Woman and just herself, is a mysterious woman. In order to solve that mystery, her story needs to remain in the past. Also, another factor of this is that in order for them to do a Wonder Woman right now, they would have to address Justice League and what was going on um, and what's going on in the future. And I think they're very hesitant to. You see how Aquaman 2 really shied away from anything connecting it too much to Justice League because Warner Brothers doesn't know what they want to do with the DCU. Let's just be honest. That's one of the reasons that these movies are being set up like this as well. Ultimately, it doesn't seem as if Marvel and DC will be releasing a woman-led film in the present day anytime soon, which is disappointing since there's a shocking lack of female characters for young girls and young women to look up to. Having characters that exist in our current socio-cultural climate is important because it provides a bridge from the superhero world of rea to reality, a reality in which audiences could sorely use some empowering contemporary figures. There you go. The problem is when you make movies for that audience, guess what, Danny? No one shows up. You gotta have an audience for your movies. And it's very clear who the audience is for these comic book movies and how you should probably market it. There are a ton of female characters in the MCU. Uh, we are getting the first female-led one, but we have more stuff coming out on Disney Plus and things like that. Um, we'll see how those do. But the idea, the entire notion, your freaking premise, that Hollywood still won't let female superheroes exist in the present, one, that's just not true. You can make these arguments about these solo movies as much as you want, but I really think that you're looking for some sort of confirmation bias based off... Uh, based off your biography, uh, what you studied, the, the fact that your thesis was on the hashtag Me Too movement. And anytime I see they, them, it kind of makes me wonder. It makes me stop and pause when you got the pronouns they, them in there. Um, and that you might be a little too worried about microtrans or microaggressions, not microtransactions. I'm talking about gaming stuff. This isn't Gaming with Geeks. This is my channel. But let me know what you guys think about this absolute joke of an article. Uh, not can't, I can't say I'm looking forward to seeing anything else written by Danny Prince in the future, but who knows? Who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video out there. Ring the bell for notifications. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.